Five. In today's video, I am going to discuss about uh, Gosu programming, especially when we are working on uh, guideware applications. As we all know, whenever we are working on uh, PNC insurance in reference to property and casualty insurance, there are a couple of applications which normally we use, something like uh, guideware, duct creek, right? So different different applications will be used in PNC insurance, wherein if you want to manage policy, so policy center is one kind of thing. It's not only about policy center, policy center, it's all about, uh, it is also about uh, uh, billing claims, right? So policy center, billing claims, right? So if you want to work on this, guideware is one of the prominent tool which normally we use in PNC insurance. But to develop this guideware application or if you want to make any configurations to be done with, there is a programming language which is called Gosu is what generally programming language which normally we use. Now in today's video I am going to discuss about uh, five different points what exactly Gosu programming is and where is that we are going to use followed by the kind of features which are uh, in Gosu at the same time uh, in what way it is being used for uh, guideware configuration and what are all it consists of Gosu consists of. Now if you see Gosu is a kind of open source programming language. This is a programming language majorly developed and built on JVM because JVM is a Java virtual machine. Basically, it's a object oriented programming related Java related stuff. Because Java is, as we all know, Java is a programming language widely used across industries for a very long time. One of the prominent uh, programming languages to develop applications. In that, we have an uh, concept of Java virtual machine along with uh, exceptions, along with uh, collections, applets, multi-threading, all that. Along with that, we have one more uh, concept of virtual machine which will be there, which is called JVM. Right? JVM architecture and all everything will be in this. So using this Java virtual machine and all, uh, this object-oriented programming, like right? oops, uh, open source programming of Gosu is being developed. The major advantage in Gosu programming is to simplify the programming through an object-oriented in a static type approach. Because normally when we talk about the nature of the approaches will be of two things. One is static and second is dynamic. Static is standard on its size, whereas dynamic can be changed according to the requirements, right? So that's how generally the nature is. But in reference to the Gosu application, Gosu programming is concerned. This is a static type of approach, which normally we are using for a very long time. Now, normally when we talk about Gosu, which as I told you, it is being used in guideware applications because whoever is working on guideware, either guideware working as a guideware developers or any other people, so those people, if they want to develop any application or if they want to configure the guideware application according to the business rules of the organization, because guideware is a product which will be used in property and casualty insurance, but there is some customization and configurations has to be made. Depends on the kind of business rules, what organization consists of, because business rules from organization to organization, this will be varied. So depends on the business rules, what that organization has, these configurations are required to make some changes, right? So for that reason, even not only for development, even for configuration also, generally Gosu is being used here. Now, when we talk about the features of Gosu, these are all the features, like because we'll be having some control flows in this, because uh, control flow is one of the feature which will be widely used in uh, Gosu programming at the same time blocks 
enhancements, classes and properties, right? So these are the different, different features which are involved in GOSU programming. Now, when we talk about GOSU, especially in guideware application, this is being used in two different areas. Of course, in the beginning, I have given the introduction, but still I'm giving you the detailed part here. Because using this programming, when we are working on guideware application, we have two benefits. One is developing and implementing, followed by configuration of uh, product configuration if you want to make anything, right? So that we can do it. At the same time, if you want to debug application business logics, means whatever the business logics are we using on. If you want to debug and application any business logics and all, those business logics will also be used here. So this is also one of the advantage wherein we can see in GOSU. Next, when we talk about what are all GOSU programming consists of, because if anybody wants to learn about this, what are all it consists of, right? So this is the thing. So first of all, person who wants to get exposure relating to this programming language, people should have an idea over object-oriented programming because OOPS is the basic fundamentals in programming, either we learn Java or any other programming language because object-oriented programming is required. So OOPS concepts will be explained first because this is something common for everything because even this programming language has been influenced through Java programming only right? because on Java virtual mission we are working on. So OOPS concepts is required. This is point number one. Next, you must be knowing about what are the different different classes, objects, interfaces and all everything will be used in GOSU that will also be learned here. At the same time, we must be knowing about what are the different different fields and as well as data types which are involved in GOSU that will be also be knowing with. Next, rules, because this is very important as I told you, business rules, right? So when we are working on a programming language to develop an application, customization or development or configurations or enhancements completely depends on the business rules because organization to organization, business rules will vary. So these rules and all everything you need to learn. So that also will be discussed here. Next properties, because setting up the properties for the project is needed because when we are working on the application or a product development, how to set the property links, right? So all these things are essentially required. This is where it being used because to do all these generally, we have Intel EIJ because uh, let me show you. We have we have an Intel EIJ here where uh, with this can be used here. Uh, Intel EIJ concept was there. So this is where generally this Intel EIJ we use it, right? So uh, this ID is there, Intel EID is there. So this Intel EIJ ID is what generally we use it whenever we are working on this GOSU programming and all. So whenever we want to develop or develop or deploy the applications or configuring the business logics, right? Updating the properties, right? All this stuff, generally we need to have an IDE support. IntelliJ IDE is what generally we use. Either it can be for, uh, it can be for Java or uh, programming or it can be for Gosu uh, or it can be for Ruby because Ruby is also one of the language. Uh, at the same time, Kotlin, right? So C O T L I N, Kotlin, right? So different different programming languages and all. IDE is important. Without IDE, development would be uh, difficult. So understanding about IDEs and all everything is also required. So when we are developing properties, properties, we are developing property options and all everything. This is something required. Here you can see, this is where generally IDEs are being used for. Just give me a second, I'll be showing you this. This is an IDE, IntelliJ IDE, it was. In this IDE, normally whatever uh, uh, the programming code, right? Whatever the codes and all everything we want to write. So we want to write everything in this, right? So you can see this is main.java application wherein uh, make sure we have to create a project first and setting up the properties is important, right? So we have to set the property links, all these things we have to do here. 
So once we are setting up the property links, etc., so we can uh, work on the application subsequently. That's what and how generally this is being used, right? So different different uh, properties will be there, right? So different different files we can create with, right? Whatever the files are required and all everything, those files can be edited with. Or else, if you want to write any kind of code or something of that sort. Right. So at the same time, if you want to build it, right. So all these things we can use it. Right. So this is where generally we have to select the property links. We have to update the property links. Right. So all these things is what we have to do with. Right. So this is what generally, yeah. So you can see the packages also. Right. So if you want to run any packages or libraries, right. So all these libraries we need to do, but we need to connect with the uh, setup and SDK is also required. So this is all something is what you will be learning when you are working on this programming language. They're setting up the properties and all everything were required. Next, we must be knowing about methods followed by methods. We must be knowing about data models because data model configurations we have to do because different, different uh, flow processes and all everything we create. Whenever we are creating all this, these data models has to be created. Data models has to be configured. So data model configuration, normally we do in uh, uh, guideware configuration. So these data models and all everything will also be used in this. Along with this, if there is any kind of enhancements, because whenever there is a configuration of the application we are doing from legacy to new applications and all, there are some enhancements to be made. So these enhancements will also be uh, discussed under this uh, language. Last but not least, configuring data model, user interfaces, etc. is also needed to learn. So this is something, this programming language is something required and useful for few people. People who are working on property casualty insurance, point number one. In that, again, in property casualty insurance, for example, people who are working on guideware or who are about to work on guideware, so either majorly in terms of the role as a developer, if you are a guideware developer or so, not only a guideware developer, if anybody wants to become a business analyst, of course, being a business analyst, we don't, we are not nothing to do with programming and all, but to have a knowledge will be an additional advantage. That is what I'm trying to say, because there, if there is any customization to be made to the existing product based on the business rules, all that. Business analyst has to understand the technicalities of it, right? So what are the different, different classes, data types we have, right? What are the rules we have, right? So all these things are essentially required. If you learn all these and all, it will be more useful to you. So even people, it's not only about the guideware developers, even people who are planning for guideware business analyst roles, Directly speaking, we don't do any programming and all that, but having the technical knowledge nowadays, because most of the profiles nowadays for a business analyst were turning into technical BAs also, because requirement of technicalities also is required. So if you understand from that context and all, learning this and using this uh, will be in professionally, it will be an additional advantage for individuals. This is all about this uh, video. If you have any questions, if you have any queries in regard to that, please reach out to the contact details, which will be posted in below to this video. Thank you.